Welcome to the Quantum Business Briefs Podcast, a production of the Quantum Franchise Group. This is your podcast for bringing the dream of business ownership to life. And now here's your host, William Huffine. Well, hello, family. I'm William Huffine. I am your host today here on the Quantum Business Briefs Podcast or Vodcast, if you're watching it on YouTube. I'm the founder of the Quantum Business Community and the president of Quantum Franchise Group. And this episode today is part of our series that we call Franchise Fridays, where we focus on one specific company in a specific industry that might just be the exact fit that you're looking for to make the dream of business ownership become a reality. So again, thank you for being here. Make yourself comfortable. We're going to go ahead and jump right into today's episode. So sometimes on these episodes, I get to talk about franchise brands that have been around for a very long time, and they have units all over the United States. And sometimes I get the opportunity to speak with someone from a brand that is brand new to the franchising scene, and they're uh, on the cutting edge. And and uh, that's what we're going to do today. I have the pleasure of speaking with Mr. Chris, Christian Betancourt. He's the Chief Marketing Officer of Voda Cleaning and Restoration. Thanks for being here, Christian. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you taking time to to uh, be here with me today and meet our audience. So we're going to dive right into this, and I'd like to give you the mic for a few minutes just to introduce our audience to uh, Voda Cleaning and Restoration. Tell us all about your brand. Give us a little, little background history and how you get to where you are today. Sure. So voting, uh, Voda Cleaning and Restoration is a home services brand that really um, was born um, this year. Um, we per, we acquired a company um, that we consider our flagship um, corporate location, and now we're you know franchising nationwide. Um, we also went through kind of a, a discovery phase of 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 who we wanted to be because we we loved the model that uh, the business had that we had acquired, um, but we also wanted to scale and set up for scalability from a branding standpoint. So we had identified that we wanted to rename um, the, the brand, the, uh, the franchise brand, and then also um, rebrand, completely rebrand it from naming to brand identity to the way that the, the logos and fonts and, and everything in between uh, the brand positioning. So um, having come in right at the beginning, I had the, the luxury of kind of, um, you know, uh, for lack of a better term, like, you know, bring this brand into the world. Um, some sure. say like birthing, which is kind of an awkward statement, but, um, <laughs> but it's not quite the, as messy. Yeah. But not as, I mean, <laughs> re renaming a company is, is definitely, uh, something that I think every marketer wants to do. It's not an easy thing to do. And also taking, you know, a, a 12 year old, um, company, where the founders, you know, this is their this is their baby. They 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 tr they entrusted in me to really go out and make sure that we had a brand that could um, stand the test of time and also have the the national appeal that we wanted. So, in a nutshell, um, Voda Cleaning and Restoration is a uh, it's a carpet and floor cleaning and restoration company. What makes us uh, unique is that. We really uh, talk to potential franchisees um, about the vote advantage. So when you start a water, you know, water damage restoration uh, company, which there are many out there, you know, the, the market is huge. And, and while uh, the market is huge, there is a lot of demand for the services. Some people don't realize that every single day there are 14,000 water damage events across the country. Wow. So we're yeah. talking, you know, I, I'm in South Florida, so we, we don't really have basements here, but my my friends back in uh, Minnesota, like basements are, you know, something that you look for when you buy a home. So when you have a flooded basement, that's, that's an uh, extremely emotional and traumatic event. So the services that, you know, brands like us provide um, is, is really critical for, for homeowners. So, um, but the challenge is from a franchise ownership perspective is that, you know, it takes month, months and months to build up that, that book of business. Um, you're a brand new restoration company, you're building relationships with, uh, consumers, but also commercial entities. You're trying to, you know, essentially be ready for when those events happen. The nice thing about Voda and the way that we built the system is that it's like having two franchises in one where 
Um, we're the fran we're franchising's only cleaning plus restoration franchise opportunity. So carpet cleaning and floor cleaning services provide consistent, predictable revenue for franchisees immediately, um, which also drives brand awareness and leads for higher revenue insurance, uh, typically insurance paid restoration jobs. So um, we, we handle anything from carpet and floor cleaning to upholstery cleaning, tile and grout um, on the cleaning side, uh, in addition to um, odor removal, and then on the restoration side, water damage restoration, storm damage uh, restoration, mold mitigation, um, uh, you know, uh, fire and smoke restoration. So um, really, our ultimate goal is to make life easier for those responsible for creating inviting and healthy spaces, both in the home and um, in uh, in businesses. So we both have a residential and a, and a commercial appeal to, to our franchise. Okay, great. So it sounds like, um, I mean, it, it, it doesn't sound like there's a catastrophe out there that you guys cannot help with. With, with everything that you named off there. So yeah, there's service. What, what we found was we were very thoughtful about, you know, the services that our the company we acquired provided and where we wanted to kind of expand as we bring franchisees onto the system. There are definitely services that, you know, restoration uh, companies provide that, that we don't. Um, mm -hmm. For instance, there's uh, there's a, a major market for, you know, when you do have something, where do you store, where you, when you have a water damage event, where do you store all your belongings, you know, to either get dried out. Um, so there's a lot of those like storage uh, capabilities that some restoration companies have. But with that comes a lot of capital investment to have a warehouse to do that um, mm -hmm. and things like that. For us, one of the biggest reasons why we can provide the opportunity for those two revenue streams um, for our franchisees is that we have kind of outfitted a proprietary rig um, or, or mounting rig in our vans that not only allow for, you know, the suction of water, but also like the propulsion of water. So you have that carpet cleaning capability, you have, you know, air duct cleaning capability, uh, odor removal capabilities, while you also have that capability to, you know, suck water out of, you know, uh, flooded basements and areas both on the residential and the commercial side. So that's one thing that's kind of unique to us is that um, we've really thought about the fact that franchisees don't have to buy two trucks. Usually one yeah. truck goes to a restoration job, one truck goes to a, a carpet cleaning um, or a floor cleaning job. Now this can be combined um, and their scalability as franchisees want to take on more territories. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So you're brand new to the franchising space. Um, you have one corporate owned unit right now, no franchise units as yeah. of today, but uh, what are your projections? Do you have a projection on how many franchise units you hope to open up in the next 12 months? Yeah. So, uh, you know, if, if my CEO, Dan was on, on with you, he would say that we are, uh, we are an emerging uh, franchise system that um, identifies as having 200 units already. Um, so we, we like to say that it's a joke, but we've been really fortunate. Um, you know, while this is a new franchise concept, um, myself, um, our COO, uh, Zach Nolte, and then Dan Claps, um, and the rest of the team, we have over a uh, hundred years of franchising experience combined and in our related fields. And um, from from large and small systems. So I, I came from um, you know managing national advertising for self esteem brands, which owns uh, Anytime Fitness, the largest fitness franchise in the world. You know, five thousand plus locations. To mm -hmm. then moving to franchise systems that were you know just starting out like ours. Um, Zach ran a really successful home service uh, franchise for a long time, for over ten years, and Dan. Um, you know, has run really successful lead generation companies. We we like to also say that sometimes that we, you know, between Dan and I, we're a lead generation company that happens to own a restoration and cleaning business. Um, but using all of those kind of superpowers, we're really put together a world-class amount of vendors, processes, and and things in place so that franchisees can can really be successful from, from the start. Mm -hmm. um, one of the one of the things that we asked ourselves when we set up our marketing strategies, 
um, our operations approaches and things was having worked on all these franchise systems in our in our you know individual experiences professionally, how would you set up a franchise system knowing what you know, knowing that you've been at a big system, um, you know, they did a lot of great things um, the right way, maybe some things the wrong way, same with smaller mm-hmm. systems. Um, how would you set it up? What vendors have you always wanted to use because you know that they're the top of the class when it comes to servicing the franchisees? And that's what we've done. We have this, this corral of not only internal employees, but world-class partners that allow us to kind of bring those strategies to life for the franchisee from day one, um, which... I'll tell you, not every franchise starting out has. It's kind of like bootstrapped, like, let's wait until we get five franchisees and then we'll bring on, you know, that that employee or that success mm-hmm. manager or whatever. We're actually building the infrastructure. We have it already and we're just ready ready to go when um, when we start selling, which our pipeline is really great right now. And we have really key territories, uh, really attractive territories that are, you know, currently being evaluated and underway. And um, yeah. we're, we're getting ready for, for our, uh, I believe, third or fourth uh, uh, Discovery Day next week. Oh, exciting. Yeah. So, you know, there's a tool that I use, and maybe you're familiar with this. Have you heard of the Zoracle assessment? I have, yes. Yeah, so it, that's one of the tools that I use with my clients to really kind of help identify which franchise concepts are going to be the best fit for them based on seven different sciences mm-hmm. and you know, we want people to, um, you know, come into a franchise system for the long haul and and love it and not just buy themselves another job that they hate. So, but uh, one of the unique, uh, one of the things that often comes out, one of the things that does come out from the Zoracle assessment is a spectrum of uh, where a potential franchisee is going to fit in a spectrum from brand new system to established yep. system. And the way I explain it to my to my clients is, you know, if they come out on one end of the spectrum, let's say on the established end of the spectrum, that tells me that that's someone who they they're very comfortable with stability. They want systems that are already in place, that are tested, that are tried. Um, whereas people who come out on the other end of the spectrum are much are, tend to be more visionary and entrepreneurial and pioneering type people. And one of the advantages there is that in these new systems like yours, those kind of people often have the opportunity to, to, to really kind of help steer the ship forward. You know, they have a, they have a voice in the company they're listened to, they're invited uh, into, um, you know, maybe a, 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 a council of sorts. I don't know if you guys have that, but I know some systems have kind of a leadership council within their franchise network. And these are the folks who really kind of help steer the brand forward. Would you say that that's true of your system where you envision your initial franchisees to kind of play that role to really kind of help steer this ship forward with you guys? Absolutely. And and we talk about that with, with our candidates and, um, you know, with our broker consultant partners. Um, absolutely. I think the, you 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 hit the nail on the head like with when it comes to franchise development and finding the right fit um especially in an emerging franchise franchisees are they're buying us they're buying myself all my 23 years of marketing experience um and franchising experience Dan's experience Zach's experience our um our restoration expert um Arthur's experience 25 years in restoration like that's what you're getting you're getting this like you know navy seal level um executive levels or executive leadership team and the early franchisees are of course going to get like what i would consider a white glove type of experience where you know especially if I, i'm in uh in south florida and in, in west palm beach if there's a franchisee that's getting established, you know, hours, you know, from me, they're getting a CMO that they can literally call and I'll drive to them and help them set up their units from a marketing perspective. Um, and what's nice is that I'm also thinking about it from, you know, the first five, the first 10, the first 50. The, and when we have 100 franchisees, I'm all, already building the infrastructure so that you don't lose that essence. Like at that point, we'll probably, you know, our, our parent company is called Franchise Playbook. Voda is, is one of the brands under 
under that portfolio. And, and our vision for Franchise Playbook is essentially to have um, you know, up to 10 brands over the next 10 years as a home service platform. Um, <laughs> and so vote is number one. And when thinking about the marketing function, setting up kind of the essence of that white glove across the system as we scale is very difficult, but we're setting it up so that, um, you know, I, I tend to want to have interactions with franchisees, regardless if the system's 100 or if we have 500 units. Um, things like uh, marketing forums where we have monthly kind of educational um, sessions on things that are changing, using chat GPT for your local marketing efforts, or um, things that are working in other markets and having a forum for franchisees to learn from that from a marketing perspective. Marketing changes every second. So of mm -hmm. course you have to bring the franchisees along and the system along. So the, those are things top of mind from a marketing perspective. And we're constantly thinking about that, but the first franchisees, whether you want to call them the the the, the founding bunch or um, votees or whatever, you know, uh, that is not an official name. That's uh, just uh, something playful. But yeah. of course, and in an FAC, a franchise advisory council, we're absolutely going to leverage that. Um, you know, our franchisees are going to be, you know, on the ground, and they're going to have the best sense of you know what's working, what needs to be adjusted. Um, but we're also getting a lot of that um, already from um, from our from our vendors who are like, hey, you know, you guys have done it this way. What do you think about that? And what's really nice is that having a flagship location um, in our kind of our corporate location that we currently have, we're able, we've tested a lot of things. So we've tested, you know, um, uh, marketing tactics, we've tested our operations, we've tested things like that. And so um, versus a, a franchise that is just starting out with no testing ground, and it's all hypothetical, and, you mm -hmm. know, sounds good on paper. Um, we are, we are in a position to really like put forth tried and true things based on our experience and based on what's worked at that flagship location. Yeah, good. So I want to shift gears a little bit and we're going to talk about financials and um, we're going to do it. We're going to actually talk about financials twice. Uh, we're going to talk about financials um, on the uh, income side, and then we're going to wrap up by talking about financials on the investment side. So I want to set the stage for a conversation about the item 19. And I want to explain to our viewers and our listeners here what the item 19 is. So uh, in the world of franchising, every franchise system is required to have a document called a franchise disclosure document. This is required by the Federal Trade Commission. And that document is to be provided to every potential franchisee uh, for them to utilize in their due diligence process of, of choosing, you know, of whether or not to choose this concept or not. Now, in that franchise disclosure document, you may or may not find what's called an item 19. Though the Federal Trade Commission requires a franchise disclosure document, they do not require that an item 19 be included in the franchise disclosure document. The item 19 gives you insight into the performance, the financial performance of franchisees who are in the system. Now, one of the things that can be challenging for folks like Christian and myself is that we are prohibited to an extent from making any kind of promises, projections, guarantees um, about your revenue, about your profitability. Um, we're prohibited from doing that, but it's also just very difficult to do because we don't know what you're going to bring to the business. We don't know what kind of energy and business acumen you're going to bring to your franchise, and we don't know what kind of expense discipline you're going to exercise. So, But the item 19 is very helpful. Um, and it does give you a glimpse into the financial performance of some uh, franchisees. Now, we're in a little bit of a unique situation here with Christian. That they're brand new to franchising, so they don't have this historical data from franchise units for us to be able to talk about. But what they have done, and I'm impressed that they've done this, because a lot of times a brand new franchise system will just kind of skip the item 19. But what they've chosen to do is they've chosen to provide uh, financial performance information from their company-owned location as a benchmark for what may be expected at franchise locations. So after that very long-winded introduction to the item, the world of item 19, um, I'm going to turn the mic over to you, my friend, and let you talk a little bit about yours. 
Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, and and I think I've always I always start with you know the the typical disclosure. You know, if you're considering a franchise, you know, um, you know, uh, definitely look at the item 19, uh, our item 19 numbers. And yeah, one thing that we wanted to do is because we we did have or we do have a flagship location, we wanted to highlight. Um, of those numbers so that franchisees could have a sense of um you know of numbers to kind of base their you know considerations um mm -hmm. with some of the other franchise systems i've been a part of um they've they've either had an item 19 you know in the case of any time you know it's a 20 year old system lots and lots of fdds over the years um mm -hmm. but i've been part of systems that haven't haven't had one and so what you find is um you know very sophisticated um you know, potential franchisee candidates um, will start kind of extruding numbers from the FDD when there is no item 19. And so we would, we wanted to rather give them something to base their calculations on. Um, also during our friend dev process, which we have a really kind of robust process. We take franchisees through um, a, a really curated uh, process from start to finish when they're considering VOTA um, is when we go through the kind of unit level economics uh, discussion of um, of the business, um, we give them some like some uh, worksheets and templates that have been kind of coordinated through uh, our our financial partners and things like that, so that they have kind of a rubric to to go back and plug in numbers and do whatever they want to. It's essentially just blank you know blank slates of. Of, of spreadsheets and so th that really helps franchisees and I and I find that um that also gleans more educated questions as they go through the process but from our standpoint our item 19 shows uh 1.7 million in gross sales now this location has multiple vans and so one of the things um because they've been operating for a while now so one thing that we wanted to call out is that um, uh, per on a per van basis, there's a gross sales per van of uh, 338,000, um, which ultimately results into 23% net margin. And that net mar margin actually does take into account um, a uh, you know a general manager of sense their their salary. Mm -hmm. So um, which is is pretty attractive. We like to say you know we have a we have attractive financials in ROI. Um, you know, low investment, high margins, and of course, you're going to get you're going to get out of the business what you put in. So, um, you know, especially when it comes to marketing, we have a lot of franchisees um, or in my past and also candidates that that really ask, you know, um, the question which we can't really answer, like how much can I make? Right. Well, from a marketing standpoint, marketing is a huge lever in answering that inevitable um, question. And, you know, there are franchisees that I would consider, um, you know, the the baseline franchisee that they take the uh, minimum required uh, ad spend, you know, FDD requires 2,500 ad spend. Uh, maybe you pay a, a vendor to run your paid media efforts, and then you get a bunch of leads, and then you get a bunch of jobs, and then you have revenue. Well, what's the biggest lever that you can pull? Increasing your marketing budget. Um, from an advertising standpoint. So we have, you know, in the past, we've had franchises, I've had franchisees that want to be like the A plus, like extra credit franchisees that, you know, double their spend and they and they see incremental um, work there. On the flip side, there are more challenging territories where you actually have to spend more because you have a, a competitive landscape, your cost per lead's higher, and you're spending more than the average franchisee in the system because, that's just the battleground that you uh, operate in. Excuse me. Um, so there's there's a lot of things that go into that. But one thing I did want to highlight is that um, in the item 19, we actually parse out um, kind of the average gross sale per restoration job because there's carpet cleaning and, um, and, and cleaning services that we provide. Um, the average job is about um, 560 dollars um for for those types of jobs on the restoration side it, it exceeds 2700 and our fdd actually the the most expensive or or the the highest uh revenue job in that fdd was uh surpassing 11000 so that's a you know a major catastrophic catastrophic event um whether it's commercial or residential but there's a huge opportunity to build those relationships 
Um, and one of the things we do provide to help kind of drive this financial view for the for our franchisees is to help uh, develop relationships with commercial entities. So whether that's uh, HOAs, realtors, um, uh, commercial businesses, uh, things like that. Um, and then even on a national scale, when we're larger, we have a vision of of creating national partnerships with with um, you know national companies to really allow our our franchisees on day one to have access to those revenue streams um, mm-hmm. from a cleaning and a restoration standpoint. So we help them kind of develop those relationships, whether it be you know the cold calling um, or the or the um, relationship building. Um, so that they don't have to, which is a big, which is a big lift. There's a big difference between getting a routine cleaning um, revenue or job into your franchise, and then you know the larger commercial restoration jobs that you know unfortunately are the result of some sort of catastrophic event in a home or mm-hmm. uh, in a business. Right. Well, I appreciate the um, the transparency. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate the, the transparency that you folks are willing to provide with, uh, you know, with such limited data there. And so for our listeners out there, if you do, if, you know, if this brand is exciting to you and you would like to move forward with a, a formal introduction, you know, you will be getting that FDD in your hand. You'll be able to read those numbers for yourself. And another um, um, th- th- thing that is available to you with most systems. Now, of course, it wouldn't be with this one, but uh, and that's validation calls uh, with a lot of systems. French uh, potential franchisees have the opportunity to reach out to existing franchise owners and talk with them about their financials. And the franchise owners are not bound by the same regulations that we're bound by. So if, during those validation calls, you can usually get a lot more in-depth information provided the franchisees are willing to open up. So let's shift gears a little bit to another topic that's often brought up in my conversations with franchisees. And that is the opportunity for uh, passive, semi-passive, fully passive. Um, talk a little bit about your system and are you and what you're looking for in terms of hands-on owner operators or semi-passive or fully passive opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, this this is something that comes up um, quite a bit. You know, there's the we do have an owner operator model, which you know is a franchisee led business. Um, one thing, you know, in the process we do get a sense of is, you know, does this person currently have a job? Um, do they plan to keep a job? Uh, do they have business ownership uh, experience? These are all things that, you know, get uh, fleshed out uh, in the um, in the candidate kind of process with our friend dev team. Um, but ultimately, the, the franchisee-led business, what's really nice about our model is that you can get up and running. Um, between 30 to 90 days, uh, I would say the the probably the average of the median is going to end up being you know somewhere around 60 or 70 days, um, and with two to three um, employees. So you might have the franchisee owner, a lead technician, and then some sort of office admin or support um, in that kind of two to three person model, where the franchisee is really managing the day to day operations of the of the franchise. You know they're they're doing people management. They're they're training and onboarding to a point using all of the tools and the LMS and and all the you know the the well thought out plans and playbooks that we provide. Um, you know you know you're managing the back end finances, the scheduling estimates, job management, and you're collaborating with us as the franchisor. Um, on the you know se- semi absentee has become kind of a dirty word in franchising a little bit because. <laughs> There's there's actually semi absentee franchises, but then there are some that claim to be. But then you get in there and it's kind of a bait and switch, which isn't very ethical. Right. Um, but from the manage the manager um, model or the semi absentee model, this is really where you're adding that like that third or fourth person. You're adding a really strong general manager, um, and then from your standpoint as an owner. You you have monthly meeting with your team members that you're coordinating with your GM. You're setting goals and expectations for the business. You're reviewing financials and sales with your GM, and then you're collaborating, of course, with with the uh, with us as the franchisor. Um, but the the GM's really taking the lead here with a lead technician as the second employee, an office admin support, and then an estimator, someone that 
um, can really uh, go out and make sure that they have a clear estimate of um, how much the job would do. And one thing that you know, we're also a kind of a technology forward company. We have some great partners in technology that allow um, our franchisees and their employees to really estimate um, square footage uh, and, and things like that. We have a, a tool that actually um, leverages iPad technology or um, the, the technology within iPads and the cameras to go around a, a site or a building or a room and actually maps the, the walls in the actual facility um, to a square footage where you can actually start estimating jobs much quicker. Yeah. Um, and that's something like unique to us. Um, and we we put that into our technology package and we know our franchisees are going to love it because it's going to save time. It's going to allow them to accurately price better um, mm-hmm. and it's going to drive um, drive some good revenue for their business. Yeah. So who's your ideal candidate, Christian? Yeah. So that's a great, um, that's a great question. I would say um, it's, you know, you might get people that say like someone that's hardworking. Um, <laughs> for, uh, I would say, honestly, no industry or trade experience was, uh, you know, required. We have, we've, I've talked to candidates and people that, you know, they're like, you know, it seems like a really dirty industry, you know, like, like, you know, why cleaning and restoration? And, you know, my joke back to them is, you know, um, having a successful, you know, uh, revenue driving business is is something that, you know, if that's, if that's what you're passionate about, something that you can pass on to, um, you know, to one of your children or or your family down the road, um, or, you know, sell down the road, that's that's ultimately what it's about. And so it's really a hunger and a drive to drive business results, like a high energy, ambitious um, business starter. Again, some of these things I'm talking about are also like the things that you would look for in your GM. So, um, you know, the, the ability to manage and motivate people, a positive mindset. We also talk a lot internally about kind of the vote away, you know, like the, the way that we put our processes in place, the way that we do things, the way that we use our kind of um, our ethical compasses and, you know, what we stand for as a company and a brand. And, and largely, you know, a lot of those things uh, like ooze from our from our parent company, Franchise Playbook. Um, but one of the things we talk a lot about is like having grit. So like being gritty. Um, so whether it's, you know, finding a solution for a customer that um, might be out of the box or going above and beyond uh, from a service perspective. Um, that's that's really what grit and service focus and, and oriented um, uh, capabilities and services are that we're providing. We're we're very much one of the kind of unique selling propositions about our brand is that while a lot of people say they're very focused on customer service. Like we do customer service well. It's it's a really it's a hard platform to stand on. Um, but one thing that you know Dan, our CEO, our CEO did um, prior to acquiring this company was he actually read through about four hundred of the of the you know uh, five star reviews and and some of the some of the reviews that weren't five stars to really get a sense of what consumers were saying about uh, about the business. And it really does show. I mean, I think the business now has 1,500 five-star reviews across all of its rating platforms. Um, and it really does take a service-forward approach um, from if somebody has a, a service um, service call with us um, and something goes wrong, um, they'll make it right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's, that's really big into who we're looking for is someone that either wants to lead a service-focused business um, or is very service focused and wants to, you know, make a difference in their communities where they live and work. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, one of the common misconceptions um, of potential franchisees is that they come into exploring a concept with this idea that they have to have some level of proficiency with the 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 product or the service that's being yeah. provided and. Um, they may look at Voda and they may think, well, I don't know the first thing about cleaning a carpet or removing mildew or dealing with mold or anything like that. And, and what I have to remind people over and over again is that's okay. They're not looking for a mold expert. They're looking for someone who can create an amazing business 
culture in their community with great leadership, with great fiscal management, with great customer service. That's what they're looking for. They, you know, you can, you can learn the other stuff and you can hire people to do the, the other stuff. So um, no, we're I not looking, we're not looking for people to, to, you know, franchisees to, to do. Now there are some, um, there are some that are, are into it. Like they, they want sure. to be hands-on. They want to be one of the, one of the team members. And, and as they scale and grow, I mean, a lot of the conversations we're having, you know, around, you know, three, four, five unit deals is really like, um, you know, building your own kind of empire. Um, yeah. And one of the really appealing things about us, you know, knowing that there are uh, other options out there is that the other options, you know, that are 200, 300 units out there, um, it, the consideration from a franchise buying perspective is, do I want to be a number in a big system or do I want to be, you know, one of the first? And like we were talking, mm-hmm. you know, that that white glove access to a CEO, the COO, a CEO, and a CMO uh, to get your business off the ground. And so those are definitely considerations when it comes to, you know, what type of um, what type of franchise you want to get into. Yeah. So piggybacking, piggybacking on what I was saying a minute ago, let's talk a little bit about training. Um, yeah. It's one of the the top of mind questions that people always have is how are you going to train me to be an ex, uh, be a successful Voda franchisee? Let's talk yeah. a little bit about your franchise, your training program. Yeah. So, um, you know, our training program is very robust. We, um, we, we have thought about it from multiple angles of like what the, what the franchisee needs. Um, franchisees come and do a week long training with us uh, that goes through marketing operations, uh, learning kind of the vote away. But one of the big things that we train on um, is really, you know, the, the proprietary technology suite that we provide our analytics platforms um, our marketing strategies, which largely we have a, um, since you have the leader of marketing on your podcast right now, I have to talk <laughs> about marketing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing myself a justice if I didn't. Right. Uh, but we really take kind of like a done for you marketing approach. So I've seen, unfortunately, in, you know, unnamed other systems that I've been a part of where, you know, franchisees really struggle with um, lead generation, but also how to operationalize leads and turn them into revenue. Um, you know, there's an example of where a franchisee, you know, was getting 130 leads uh, in a month. Um, and that was pretty average for the system in question. Um, and they were said, well, we're not doing very well. And so digging through the data, because numbers don't lie, um, you know, they were only calling on uh, about 30 of the 100 leads because mm. their front desk person didn't like to make cold calls. Wow. Um, so in that case, what we've done is we've really built out a marketing structure and a marketing um, program that really allows all of those tactics to be taken off our franchisees' hands so they can focus on, A, running the business, and two, mm-hmm. giving great service to our customers and their employees. Um, so from, from lead generation, so uh, Facebook advertising, Google advertising, uh, Angie's List, Home Advisor, all of those different um, avenues, all of those leads go into a centralized CRM system. And then we have a 24 seven call center that actually answers the phone within seven minutes wow. um, and, and, and sets those appointments. Now the franchisee does pay, you know, uh, a fee for every appointment that gets set. That's just the mm-hmm. charge for the, for the actual service. Um, but at that point, that that scheduled job is already done for you. Now you just have to like send your team off to do it and yeah. give great service and the revenue rolls in. So um, we've thought about that from a lot of different angles. And so we train on those marketing tactics, how to, how to do localized social media, how to do reputation management correctly, um, and how to look at your numbers and know your numbers so that you can take, um, you can take, you know, calculated bets on doubling down where, where things are working or correcting things that might be um, going wrong. So we have, you know, new franchisee training typically goes through all of that or f- foundational business training, uh, marketing the vote away, um, technical field training. So we actually do quite a bit of like in-field training. So whether that franchisee wants to learn how to clean a carpet, like we're going to take them through that so that they understand. Mm-hmm. Um, establishing best financial practices. We realize not every 
every uh, franchisee that comes in is going to come in with a, you know, with an MBA that knows accounting, knows finance, knows, um, you know, modeling and forecasting. We're going to give them those tools, um, how to do, how to provide the gold standard for customer service. Um, lots of job shadowing, which, um, and then ongoing support. So, um, and I think the big thing that franchisees ask is, is kind of three questions. It's, um, how am I going to, how am I going to get leads or jobs? What happens Mm -hmm. when the phone rings and how do I find employees? So one of the things that we've established is kind of a a really cool program um, called Talent Scout that we actually help um, and give tools to the franchisee um, to, in the form of job descriptions, you know, how to hire best practice that, you know, obviously we have to abide by dual employment law um, as a franchisor, but we give them all the tools to be successful for not only hiring, but retaining and developing employees. Um, I would say, I'd like to say that it's kind of a crash course in, in HR and, and finding the right people and, and trying to um, provide that both in a classroom setting and also in a learning management setting, which um, is called uh, Playbook University, which comes from our parent company. Yeah. Wow. That's, that, that is a very robust training system. I'm impressed. Yeah. You know, I'm one of the, uh, occasionally I'll be speaking with a potential franchisee and they'll say something like, um, William, why would I go with a franchisee or franchisor and not just start my own business? Why don't you know, why, what, why shouldn't I just start my own independent cleaning and restoration business? And I, that's where I have to explain to them that, you know, with a franchise system, you're getting a business in a box. I mean, you're, if you're starting in your own independent business, sure. People have done it. And every franchise system started with one person who had an idea and started a business. So we don't want to minimize that at all. There are some very courageous souls out there who have been very successful in creating independent businesses, but with a franchise system, you get this business in the box, you get an established brand, you get a reputation, you get systems, you get training, you get you get typically a, a lower um, cost of entry and you get a faster ramp up on your ROI. And um, so there's a lot of things in this box. And one of the questions that I always ask my guests on this podcast is what all is in that box? And I think you've told me a lot of it. You, you, know, you get the training, you get the, the lead generation, the call center, the assistance with onboarding employees, et cetera. Is there anything else that's in that box that we haven't talked about? Yeah. So um, the, the box is very robust. And again, you know, kudos to the team from, from, from Dan to even, you know, franchise development plays a huge role right now in, in the, in our, in our brand, but, you know, our COO, myself and, and Dan and, and Fran Dev really have thought about this from the standpoint of like, how do we build a world-class franchise based on all of our experience? And, you know, that based on everything we've talked about, it's really like, if you want to go, if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go together, um, yeah. the old adage. And I think when it comes to our system, we've really thought about, you know, from a standpoint, if, if I were a franchisee, what would I want? What's really unique about our team, um, you know, kind of like the, the first four of us in the company, um, we've all been entrepreneurs. We've all built companies from scratch. Um, and, and actually one of the reasons um, one of the reasons I actually came to Franchise Playbook and Voda was just how amazing the team was and, and the vision of what we were building. Because mm-hmm. I had built my own marketing company. I was doing, I had my own clients. And this, and I tell potential candidates this too, is that this was such an awesome opportunity um, to build a brand from scratch, to build a franchise from scratch that, you know, I... I dismantled my own company to do this. And some mm. people are like, wow, like, why would you do that? you like, you were your own boss. You had your own clients. You had control of everything. But I also got bit by the franchising bug, you know, many years ago. And franchising is very addicting, especially from a marketing perspective. So it was one of the reasons I, I came over. Um, but one of the things in our box that I do want to touch on is um, this idea of knowing your numbers. Every franchise, every franchise owner says it like, you know, anything worth, um, you know, worth uh, measuring is is worth, um, you know, knowing. But the thing is, is when we looked at the marketplace and I've used 
countless CRM tools. I've used countless analytics platforms. I've, I've built, you know, bootstrapped analytics platforms for marketing programs. We didn't really find a solution that really fit what we were envisioning, both mm -hmm. from a franchise development standpoint or internal franchisor perspective, but more importantly for the franchisee. So we actually went out and found, you know, a smart partner, um, a former uh, Google data scientist that started their own analytics company. And we said, here's what our vision is for what we're building. And this is what we're building. It's called Scoreboard. But going off the franchise playbook is all about the sports analogies. So you'll hear football analogies and and, and mm -hmm. things like that. We uh, One of our core values is we, we play through the whistle. So there's Tons of puns there, but uh, scoreboard really what what scoreboard is about is pulling in data from uh, a massive amount of different sources and displaying it in a really easy way to understand uh, dashboards. So a franchisee can go in and understand their financials um, that's tied to you know um, our financial systems that they're using. They can understand their marketing uh, effectiveness. You know how much did I spend on ads? How many leads did I get? Uh, how much revenue came from those jobs. Um, they can understand their uh, their employment situation, like how are their hours going, uh, spend on, on uh, various uh, employees um, and things within the business. So it's a central dashboard for them to really understand um, everything happening in their business so that they can make data-driven decisions based on those numbers versus spending all the time to gather stuff. As a, mm -hmm. as a business owner my, you know, in, in my past, I feel like I was always toggling between, you know, Square and QuickBooks and, and all these things that were kind of all meshed together. Um, but we really set up a system where we have the right technology providers piping into a dashboard that really shows you all the key things you need to know. Um, mm -hmm. And then we're also exploring uh, kind of innovative things around how do we make our manuals more uh, more engaging, you know, you, you buy a franchise, you might get this massive 400 page operations manual that goes like, here's how to do a Facebook post. And like, right. there's bulleted, we've all seen them. Um, what we're, what we're looking at doing is how do we integrate, you know, learning techniques that allow us to integrate AI so that a franchisee can just ask like, what's the best time to post on Facebook? And then if it's in the manual, it'll actually tell them or it'll mm -hmm. leverage data from other sources. So definitely um, on the AI train as far as technology. And, and I think um, if the dots can be connected for franchisees, we've connected them using their partners, technology or people um, yeah. that really allow them to know what's going on in their business. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, it's a big box with a pretty bow on it. I like it. So, it is. Um, and, and you know, it's pretty, but it's also, it, it's, it, you know, the, the gift inside is it's actionable. Um, yeah. It's actionable resources. It's not just, you know, as a franchisor, we had to provide this. Yeah. Um, we actually thought, thought really hard about what vendors we put in our, in our, um, uh, in our FDD and how much they cost. Mm -hmm. I mean, a big part of buying a franchise is also the buying power that we have. And so even us, as a small franchise, we've level, leveraged our relationships with um, what is a lot of the same vendors that we've used in the past to yeah. get favorable, you know, monthly fees or charges for our franchisees. Yeah, great. So we're going to bring this home with another conversation about financials. Uh, everybody wants to know, okay, what's it going to what's it going to take to get in? And um, I just again want to set the table here for this conversation and and make sure that people understand that. When we talk about the investment in a franchise, we're typically talking about three things. We're talking about an initial franchise fee, which gets you the box. The franchise fee has the box delivered to you. Uh, secondly, we're talking about um, equipment, supplies, um, you know, hard assets. If you're in a brick and mortar location, we're talking about build out and lease and you know uh, all of these things. And then thirdly, we're talking about initial operating capital, three to six months, marketing spend. And, you know, paying yourself, et cetera, as you're ramping up your business. So if you're exploring franchises, whenever you see an investment range on a document, that is, that's telling you everything that is lumped into this investment here is going to land somewhere in that range. And the reason why there's a range is because particularly things like supplies and equipment and real estate or, or you know, physical build out, 
that's going to be an entirely different number in San Francisco than it's going to be in Tupelo, Mississippi. So that's why you often see a range in this documentation. So let's talk a little bit about the investment with Voda. Yeah. So one of the things that's really unique about us is that, um, you know, there's no brick and mortar required. Um, now, with that said, on the higher end of our range, so our total, what we like to say, all in investment um, is 146500 on the low end to $198,250. Um, the, a couple of the, of the things that kind of, kind of get you to the higher end is if you are building out uh, multiple territories, which means you're having multiple vans and you want a home base, there, you know, you're thinking, you're thinking about like rent. You're thinking about, um, you know, a, a small type of of warehousing space. Um, so that's what can lead to that. Also, mm-hmm. from the consideration of leasing your van versus buying, that also mm-hmm. will adjust um, things. But what's really nice is we have built out a program that allows you to not have to wait for a long lead time for equipment. We we package this out with um, really amazing vendors. Um, that can can deliver not only the supplies you need, but the actual outfitted van that can deliver it right to your door. I think they charge a dollar a mile uh, out of Dallas. So if you're a franchisee, um, they can deliver your Voda van like right to you. Um, so we've really thought about that. And then of course, line by line, how do we make it so that our franchisees um, aren't spending over overspending in the beginning. So when we think about grand opening, uh, marketing, we you know initial brand fund things like that. We've really thought of that from a from a marketing tech stack, from an IT tech stack, um, and things like that. So um, mm-hmm. it's and one of the things to note too. So we are SBA registry uh, registry listed, Express Loan eligible. Um, we don't have extremely expensive materials. Um, obviously, the van is is your you know your lifeblood of of being able to mm-hmm. provide the services. Um, but you know you you can be up and running in you know thirty to ninety days. Um, again, with with that medium right now being probably around sixty to seventy. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it sounds like all in for under two hundred grand. So yeah. that's good. Yeah. yeah, our our operation, um, Zach Nolte, our COO and, and the team really did a lot of due diligence to really make sure. And, you know, it's probably a benefit. You know, he he led um, a pretty successful um, home services kitchen remodeling um, brand before coming over here. And then he started another one, actually. So you think about those cons of those home home service concepts that require a lot of materials, meticulous planning, uh, mm-hmm. things like that, I think. He's really great at that, and he's brought that to our team, thinking about what what the franchisee is going to need um, from the standpoint of nice to haves and like necessary to haves uh, right. within the within the system. All right, so I really want to just bring this home by uh, turning the mic over to you, Christian, to share with us any final words that you'd uh, like to make sure that people walk away from this podcast with that we haven't already talked about. Yeah, no, thanks again for for inviting us on, uh, letting me talk about Voda. I'm really passionate about what we do. I really do Mm -hmm. believe that we help um, our customers be the heroes of their home and create, you know, inviting healthy spaces, both uh, in their home and and for their businesses. Um, So if, you know, if anyone's interested, reach out to William and and we'll definitely uh, help you learn more. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to see if we can make some introductions for you and uh, and get some of these first franchisees franchisees onboarded into your system. So, Christian, thanks so much. Great conversation. I wish you guys much success. For those of you who have tuned in, thank you so much for being here. I hope you got, learned a lot about this industry, and uh, I hope to uh, see your name pop up on my uh, my lead form one of these days and help you make a formal introduction with Christian in this company. So, that's it. We'll call it a wrap. Best of luck to you, my friend. Thanks a lot. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Quantum Business Briefs. I want to wrap up just by telling you a little bit about our sponsor, Quantum Franchise Group. We are a full service franchise brokerage and much the same way that a real estate brokerage helps an aspiring homeowner to find the perfect home. 
we help aspiring business owners or even experienced business owners to find the perfect franchise opportunity. We take an integrity first approach. We are not in the sales business. We are in the relationship business and we are committed to putting your needs first and helping you find the opportunity that is the absolute best fit for you. So if you'd like to connect, we'd love to work with you. Everything that we do, we do at no cost to you. You can learn more about us at Quantum Franchise Group. Dot com, or you can simply text the word FREEDOM to 815-885-5475 and that'll begin an initial conversation. Thanks again for being here today. I hope you have an amazing today, an amazing tomorrow, and an even better day after that. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Quantum Business Briefs Podcast. If you'd like to be a guest on our show, text the word PODCAST to 815 815- 885-5475. We'll see you next time, but for now, be well, do good, and make it an amazing day. Bye.